Welcome back to the channel and thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. Today we're going to be talking about natural ways to improve your heart health. So I'm going to be giving you some actionable tips that you can do in order to prevent any type of heart issues from occurring. And then if you do have heart health issues, how to improve those. So I've got a really neat study that I'm going to be talking about with vitamin K2 that talks about reversing arterial placking. So make sure you stay for that. And if you can, please subscribe to the channel, hit the like button. I really appreciate it. Share this with your friends and family because it helps me achieve my mission of educating and helping as many people as possible. So why this is important is that one in four deaths in America is from a heart related issue. That's very scary to think about. So one out of four people watching this are going to have some sort of cardiac event that leads to a fatality. And with this, one of the biggest reasons in my research that this is occurring isn't because of genetics, it isn't because of some outlying factor, it's highly because of sugar consumption. With my patients here in the office, I typically see that if they have blood sugar issues, diabetes, insulin resistance, or some other metabolic issue, they typically will have a heart issue as well. I'm seeing a lot of patients who have atrial fibr fibrillation, they're having to have bypass surgeries, they have claudication issues. And so sugar is one of the main components that is causing inflammation in the vessels. And if you've watched some of my past videos, I talk about this whole process. But to give you a, a very basic understanding is that high sugar levels will actually cause inflammation in the vessels. And then your cholesterol will cause the placking because it's the putty, it's trying to decrease the inflammation in that arterial vessel. A consequence of that is that you get blockage of these vessels, and if that plaque breaks off, then that's what leads to a heart attack, a stroke. And so you have to address it at the root cause, which we're gonna be talking about today. Another reason is that we're let, less physically active than we used to be. A lot of people are sitting more, they're not getting out and uh, outside and running around and biking and doing the things that are really good for your heart. And I'm gonna give you a simple solution. It's only gonna take you 10 minutes. And if you don't have 10 minutes a day, then I'm sorry, but you know, there's nothing that I can really do from that standpoint. But it's something that I have really good success with with my patients and my background being in the exercise and fitness industry that is a game changer, okay? So let's talk about the first thing. So diet is probably about 80% of the issue when it comes to heart disease. A lot of people, like I said, are eating way too much sugar that's causing inflammation. The best diet that you can do if you don't have any autoimmune issues, which is a, a whole nother issue that we I talk about in some of my past videos, but as long as you don't have an autoimmune issue, the Mediterranean diet is a great diet to follow. This doesn't mean that you can't ever have a piece of cake or a candy again. It just means that you really need to make 80% of your diet uh, these foods that we're gonna talk about and Mediterranean based, and then 20% of it, you can still have you know a treat every now and then, preferably something that's healthier. But when we talk about the Mediterranean diet, it's high in omega-3s, which is fish. So this looks like salmon, tilapia, cod, um, all of those typically have a high ratio of omega-3s. These are very heart healthy and they're very anti-inflammatory. I'm gonna talk about this later, how you can supplement if you don't like eating fish, you can just use a simple omega-3 supplement. I really like Nordic Naturals. I think that they have a very high quality fish oil and it's something you can find on Amazon fairly cheap. And um, I've seen great results. I've used this for a lot of my patients that have brain injuries or concussion injuries, and it really helps just brain function as well, not as well as uh, heart health. Olive oil, this is something that you can put on your salads. Um, you drizzle it over it rather than using something like ranch or Thousand Islands dressing. Put a little bit of oregano in it, put you know some other spices in it, and uh, that, just a, a teaspoon of that a day can really help benefit. It's the same principle as the omega-3s. It has a lot of heart healthy fats in there that help reduce the placking, okay? 
The trans fats are where you get into trouble when it comes to fat consumption. So these are saturated fats along with red meat. There is a, a lot of criticism behind red meat, which I don't uh, necessarily agree with. I think that if you are eating certain amounts of red meat with a lot of sugar, a lot of simple sugars, then that can cause a lot of oxidation, which can you know, cr cause free radicals and damage throughout the body. But if you, as long as you're not eating those simple sugars, red meat is gonna to be totally fine. It's the combination of the two that causes the issue. Then leafy greens. So these look like kale, spinach, uh, you know, lettuce, cabbage is really good, especially when we talk about sauerkraut down here. Very good for gut health. And this is very anti-inflammatory as well. So it has a, a lot of antioxidants in it that can help just decrease inflammation in the body as well. But your leafy greens are gonna be one of the, the biggest um, foods that you wanna incorporate into your diet in order to get the antioxidant properties of those as well. Now, baker's yeast is something that I use as more of like a butter. So what I do is I will actually sometimes put that on my salads along with olive oil and it gives it more of like that buttery rich taste. And baker's yeast, you can put it on pretty much anything and I would, it, it's very cheap as well. You can just go to your local health food store and just try sp sprinkling it on it. It may take a minute just to get accustomed to it, but baker's yeast is great for just adding kind of more of a savory, buttery taste to any of your foods. Walnuts are great as well, same thing. Everything comes back to omega-3. So you wanna have the right omega-3 to omega-6 ratio. Typically in America, we have a higher omega-6 ratio than we do omega-3s, which is more pro-inflammatory when you're talking about omega-6s versus omega-3s. But walnuts, same thing, especially if you're not a big fish eater, then walnuts are something that you can use in order to get that omega-3 ratio. This is a great for just a snack, okay? So just keep that on hand and, you know, just uh, a handful. They have a, a very high caloric density to them so that they'll give you more of a full feeling. And, um, you know, a lot of people say almonds, but almonds have high oxalates in them and some people have sensitivities to that. So I typically see that cashews, walnuts, Brazil nuts, which are high in zinc, have a better effect rather than uh, almonds. Then the liver, liver supplements are actually very powerful because they have all of the amino acids that you need for detoxification. They help support all of the basic vitamins and minerals that you need in the liver to detoxify. So a liver supplement uh, can be great to add in as part of your detoxification process because that's the number one function of the liver is detoxification. When you know that your detoxification system is slowing down is when you'll have dry, itchy skin, you'll have rashes come up on your skin, you may start losing your hair, you may start getting brain fog, and you'll also see hormonal issues when you have any type of toxicity issues throughout the body. Now, the next thing is supplements. So there, there are a few that you really wanna focus on here, especially depending on how bad your heart health is or if you're just wanting to maintain. Omega-3s, we've already talked about those. Nordic Naturals is a great one. CoQ10, this is a must if you're taking statins and your cardiologist should be telling you this because the statins will actually uh, deplete CoQ10 in your body. I'm not a huge fan of statins. I see many patients develop neuropathy from statins and there's more and more research coming out about that as you find out years later about these drugs and their side effects. Garlic and hawthorn, just add this into your meals. You know, uh, just chop up some garlic and, you know, put it in your salad or, you know, put it on your fish or mix it in with, you know, some red meat and you're good to go. Hawthorn, make sure you definitely talk to your doctor before starting any hawthorn. And then the other things that I like to do are berberine and alpha lipoic acid because this comes back to sugar consumption. If we control your blood sugars, then we know that we're gonna be addressing the root cause of any type of heart health issues, especially when it comes to the arterial plaquing. 
And then I just made a video not too long ago about vitamin K2. There's actually research that shows that vitamin K2 can actually reduce arterial placking when taken over a span of six to 12 weeks. So I'm gonna put the links to the, the, those re, that research uh, below. So if you wanna check that out and take a deeper dive into it, then you can. And then the last thing, cause I don't want this to go too long is exercise. I've Tabata was a, a Japanese doctor who came up with this very efficient exercise system. Now he talks about it a little bit different than I do. Typically they only do it for four minutes, which is great, especially if you're on a time crunch and everybody has four minutes. However, I like to do 10 minutes with my patients. This is, especially if you have neuropathy, claudication issues, if you have issues with standing for a long period of time, then I recommend that you do this in the pool or on a bike. But what you're gonna do is you're going to exercise at a high intensity for 20 seconds and then rest for 40 seconds. The reason I like that is that it gets the metabolism going, it gets the heart rate up, but you also get a rest period afterwards so that you can stay effective. So you're not just constantly going at a high pace and it's not this long drawn out workout. So whether you're doing biking, running, jogging, walking, you wanna go at 20 seconds at about you know, 70 to 80% of what you feel comfortable with. And then that 40 seconds, you're just moving. So you're, you're not trying to ramp up your heart rate. Maybe you're just walking or you're decreasing that intensity on the bike or in the pool or whatever you're doing. But this is a, a great tool. You can YouTube some Tabata videos. They have some really great ones out there. But that has been a game changer for a lot of my patients that maybe are, are busy or, you know, they don't want to spend 30 minutes in the gym. This is something that you can do at home. Okay, hopefully this helps. Let me know if you have any questions below. Thank you so much for watching. Please like, share, subscribe. This is how I'm planning on paying off my student loans. So thank you so much for your support.